why Kanye West is losing fans, a lesson in customer experience, or how not to do the damn thing. From his groundbreaking albums to his disruptive influence in the fashion world, Kanye West has been a force of nature. But in recent years, his controversial actions have left many of his fans in dismay and disconnected. So let's break down some of the key moments where his fans have become his critics and how this correlates to a brand's customer experience. I don't know which one of these to present to you guys. There's so many. Jesus Christ. Interrupting Taylor Swift at the VMAs and the ongoing feud with the star. Thank you so much for giving me a chance to win a VMA award. I... Yo, Taylor. I, I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. One of the best videos of all time. This alienated a significant part of his audience, including potential new fans. He appeared arrogant and disrespectful to say the least. Not necessarily that the two worlds collided like his fans and Taylor Swift's, but nevertheless it alienated people. So what this translates into the business lingo is brands that interrupt you or ignore your feedback often get backlash and they lose loyalty. Duh. Controversial statements about slavery. When you hear about slavery for 400 years, for 400 years, that sounds like a choice. <laughs> like, this alienated a big part of his fan base and his customer base, actually, which is the black community, which felt like, what the frick? What, 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 what? And this created outrage and rightfully so, but it created discomfort. This led to public criticism and loss of credibility and loyalty. Now, in the business world, this is called tone-deaf communication, and this can severely damage a company's reputation and the customer's trust. And if you lose customer's trust, then they won't buy from you. Anti-Semitic comments and White Lives Matter t-shirts at the Paris Gala. Now, this impacted him the most because companies broke ties with him, so a lot of his sponsorships and partnerships went away Way, along with a big customer base. As a parallel in the business world, aligning with controversial figures and endorsing them is a big no-no because these alienate different demographics and lead to loss of market share. And now as a side note, it seems like Kanye doesn't care about money and I am struggling really hard to find, you know, the goodness in him as well because I do like his music, um, but that's about it. So I'm trying to see this from an outward perspective of what makes him a human and, uh, you know, not caring about money you know i that's pretty good i mean uh, not being fueled by just the greed of wanting more and more and more i find that laudable i guess uh, that's a good quality to have arguably the best leaders in history didn't start off from just wanting money that's a very shallow goal to have to be honest a few more shit storms that kanye started couldn't stop talking about his wife and her new relationship and then he got a new wife which looks suspiciously like his old wife just just that much younger and hotter. And now he's parading this new wife, Bianca Sensori, uh, I don't know, to just maybe show Kim Kardashian like, oh, look what I got. <laughs> I'm the lame, but whatevs. Kanye declared his support for Balenciaga when they had that shit storm with child pornography. And woo, Jesus. Oh, and how he threatened Pete Davidson to kick his ass because he was dating Kim Kardashian. Pretty lame, bro. What can businesses learn from Kanye aside from don't do that crap? Now, here's some actionable steps that you can take in your business to ensure your customer experience remains strong and resilient and that even in challenging times before we continue please like and subscribe to this youtube channel i'd be really grateful and it would really help the algorithm and get this to more people if you dislike anything just comment to tell me why i want to know number one tip is listen to your customers implement regular feedback loops and surveys and focus groups so you can stay in tune with your customers' needs and concerns. We run a customer experience agency and we're experts in Zendesk. And you know what our catch rate is? Collect the feedback. As a long-term impact, if you collect feedback, you build this culture of constant improvement and people see that and people like it because this directly influences the services you provide and people like you even more and then they recommend you to their friends and family and you blow, you blow it up even more customers and revenue. Tip number two, be transparent and apologize when necessary. If you make a mistake, own it. A prompt and sincere apology can go a long way and it can restore trust. Don't make a lame apology where you're not even apologizing. You're just shifting the blame to your audience or to somebody else. Don't do that. That's 
lame. You need to develop a crisis management strategy, which encourages you to be transparent and accountable uh, right then and there in the moment, because that's very impactful. If you wait two weeks to make a statement, you know, you lost. You lost everyone. Align your brand with positive values. Review your brand's messaging and partnerships to ensure that they align with your core values. As a long-term strategy, regularly engage with your audience. Understand what values matter and reflect those in your communication. Prioritize inclusivity and sensitivity. As an immediate action, you can audit your marketing strategy and your marketing messages to avoid potential misalignment with your audience. As a long-term strategy, you want to align and foster an inclusive culture that celebrates diversity, ensuring your brand is welcome to all customers. Now, why you should do all of this? Well, it's easy. If you treat people well, if you make them feel included, if you make them feel heard, if you have good value and you sell a good product and you're serious and you listen to them, they will come back. They will recommend you to their friends and family and they will buzz about you on social media and you have nothing but to gain. Data shows that companies that have a customer experience centric culture are doing far better than companies that do not. Now, if you want to just fake it, sure, you can try it out. Maybe it can work for a few months, a year. But if you fake it, if you don't actually feel it, that you have your customer's best intent at heart, people will see through that and you just, you know, go away really fast. Companies that practice good customer experience and good customer service, like uh, Apple, Amazon, uh, Zappos, to name a few. How long have these companies been around? <laughs> a really long time, especially for Apple. By the way, read the book, Delivering Happiness. I just read it and uh, yeah, it's a good popcorn book. I especially like the struggle. Like, oh my God, everybody struggles in business. Seems that big companies do too. So there you go. That's it for me. Hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Again, subscribe if you want or not. You do you, boo-boo. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.